so longs and even faints for you. Oh, my heart and my flesh, it cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ear with trembling and tears of yearning. Oh, your face I'm burning longing for you I need you I need you for nothing no place no one else will do I need you I need you for you satisfy the longing inside
Hallelujah. We need him, don't we? Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a good praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Dove Christian Center Church, also known as Dove Church. We're glad you tuned in to see us today, and we bless you. We trust that God has given us a great word for you today, and, and we're glad to just present it to you. We thank those that are faithful viewers and to those that are faithful givers to the ministry. You help us to get the word out in so many ways, and we, we bless you for that. And now, as usual, we're going to say our confession and then prayer, and then we're going to move into our message for this service. Everybody with your Bibles, wherever it is, on whatever device, iPad, phone, repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Father, we thank you. For the entrance of your word not only brings light, but it brings life. We magnify you and we bless you today. And God, we declare over and over again how much we need you. We need you to help us through. And we thank you that we have the help that we need. We thank you for the victory we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for this word. And now, Lord, we ask that this word would that has been a meditation in our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Prophecy in these times, lesson five. Prophecy in these times, lesson five. And then the subtitle is expect your prophetic promise. Expect your prophetic promise. We're going to talk about prophetic promises today. Expect your prophetic promise. We are prophecies and we have promises. And so today they, they join together. And I tell you to expect your prophetic promise. Expect it. What is a prophetic promise? It is a declaration binding something from one person to another person. It foretells of something to come. It may be absolute, and in parenthetical notes, it says, whole without condition, absolute, whole without condition, or conditional. Now, I had two definitions, and I gave you the prophetic promise one, but I want to backtrack 
and say that prophecy is defined as, and you don't have to write this down because I combined them in prophetic promise, is a foretelling or declaration of something to come. That's prophecy. But a promise is also a declaration binding something from one person to another. A promise may be absolute or unconditional. So when I gave you the, the prophetic promise definition, it was, it was a combination of both of those uh, uh, original definitions from promise to prophecy. Well, as we move into the lesson, I want to give you an example of, of, of an absolute prophetic promise. An absolute, absolute prophetic promise. It's without condition. An absolute prophetic promise is without condition. This is going to bless you today. Isaiah 7, 14. And I'm going to give you scripture references to point out exactly what we're teaching. And this is an absolute prophetic promise. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Amen. That's absolute because it's not conditional on anything. The virgin is going to bear a son and this is what you're going to call him. It was absolute. It wasn't a, if she's such and such years old, if she's this, if she's that, it says a, meaning one, virgin, shall have a son. And it's going to be the sign that this is the one. Absolute. Now let me give you an example of a conditional prophetic promise. A conditional prophetic promise. And the reason why we're covering this is because this is on the plus side. This is something you can expect. This is something you can take for yourself. You have prophetic promises that you can activate and war with and operate with and, and, and see results. Here's an example of, a, a, of a, a conditional. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. And it says there, now it shall come to pass. That, that means it shall happen. That's a promise. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully, that's the conditional. Observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today and here comes the promise swinging back in. That the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. This went to the children of Israel. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the condition. That's conditional. The voice of the Lord your God. Do you see it? Amen. Is it conditional? It, it, that you observe? And that you do it. And then he said, now it shall come to pass. He started out on the positive note with you. Then he went into, but now it shall come to pass if you diligent. That means you're not on again and off again that you stay straight with it. Amen. And sometimes we lose it because we lose steam and we just drop off. I wonder is he still working? I wonder. No, what he says he means. And he doesn't change his mind. And, 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 and your new tradition and your newfangled way of doing stuff does not change God's original plan or his attitude. Amen? A new century doesn't change God's mind. A new week doesn't change God's mind. 
What he said yesterday, he means today, and he'll mean it tomorrow. Because he's just that consistent. Because the Bible says of him, he is the same how? He's the what? Yeah, yeah, he's the, he's the, that means there is no changing in him. There's no variation in him. He's the same. And then when you can depend on something being the same, you can, you can trust that. You can take it to the bank. You can say, God said it, so I, I, I have it. So it might be conditional and it might be unconditional. Amen. But the truth is, you have prophetic promises from the Lord. Now, let me go on. A good way of looking at promises, rather than when we get a promise, we say, it's got to happen. We, we, you, you promised it to me. That's the way men make promises. But, but in essence, God's promises are an, an, an invitation to agree and rally with him. It's an invitation. I invite you to join me. That's a little different attitude about promise. And if you join me, this is what you can expect. I invite you to join me. He doesn't make you because he would have to change everything. He gave you free will. He gave you a free mind. And it's your decision to trust him or not trust him. And so it's the same thing. When he gives you a promise, he says, I'm opening up the door that you have an invitation to rally along with me and to work with me. And to allow my will to overcome your will so that I can bring my will to pass through you. He's trying to make his will come to pass through you. That's who he wants to do it through. He, he, you are the door into the earth that he operates with. My God. But the truth is, and here, here's some information you might not like. The prophetic promise comes with a process. Everybody say process. How many of you know you get a promise and then you go through a process? Sometime a door closes and another one is going to open on the other side, but it's held in the hallway. <laughs> so it's a process. It's a process. Because we think we get the promise and then we get the manifestation right away. It doesn't always happen that way. We got too many scriptures that show just something slightly different. And I'm going to talk about that a little, a little later in the message. Receiving and believing a word is only the first step. That's a biggie, but it's only the first step. Receiving and believing. You got to take it in and you got to believe it. Once we get a word, we've got to do something with that word and we've got to, the right response is we've got to persevere. We got to hang out with it as if God told us something. Woo. That's why you hear the word so you can know God said something to you. That's why you read it. That's why you study it. That's why good, good biblical information imparts to you. And you say, I read it in the word, so I'm taking it and I'm claiming it as by right. The response, again, is perseverance. The how and when is God's business. Now, when he gives you a promise, you can't tell him how to get it to you. Because some of you want to track your own success. And you can't do it in no, on no mountain of influence in the world, be it business, be it economic, be it governmental, or whatever. You can plan for success, but you cannot track it. 
Some things you have to wait and see if it's going to work out. Amen. How many know I'm right about that? So what do you need to do? You need to get the how out of it. Get the how out of it. How are you going to do it, God? That's not your business. If he told you he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And when he does it, he's going to amaze you with the process. And one of the most amazing things is he didn't need your help. <laughs> he doesn't need your help to do it. And it's so good, you say, wow, this is amazing, this is bad. I had no idea. Anybody been surprised by God that way? It just, just, just worked out. You, you, you was expecting the worst, and it just worked out. And, it's smooth. and it, you couldn't rest the night before. And it, it came and went so fast, you said, oh, what, what was I worried about? Because you were spending time trying to work it out. How, how, how? And God said, it's my business. So some of you I don't have to tell, just go on to sleep. Just go on to sleep. Amen. Amen. The next thing we need to do is internalize the word given to us. It, it must become a part of our hearts. Because when it becomes a part of your heart, it causes you to have hope. And you need hope. Because the Bible says, if you don't have hope, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, is what the scripture says. When it's deferred, when you don't have hope, you are sickly. But when you have hope, you're going to make it. I have hope today. And every time the enemy brings something, he wants to bring you a hopeless scene, a hopeless situation. There is no help for it. There is no way out for it. But at the same time, God is saying that, that if you internalize my word, it brings hope. It builds, it builds something in you, a fortitude to say, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm not going under. I'm going over. I'm not going back. I'm going through because you got hope. You don't have no signs of much else, but you got hope. What is your hope? God said. Come on. come. God said it, so I got hope. I'm going, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't know the way. I'm, I'm getting the, 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 I almost said another word, getting the how out of there. But I got hope. How many of us have just had hope? We've not had much else to depend on, but we just trusted. We said, I know it's going to work out somewhere. And we've been at some tight places, and all I had was my hope and trust in God. Is it going to happen? And God just relieved it. And, and sometimes I think he, 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 he run late. Come on, y'all too spiritual to admit it. God, you late. Don't hold your hand up and say, I, I said it too, Pastor. Because you said it. I thought you would come when. You need to finish the sentence. When I wanted you to. <laughs> His ways still aren't our ways. Let me, let me go on. Every time God gives us a word, it's a piece of his heart. I'm going to show you where I, I saw this at. And while I was in study, it, 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 it brought a familiar scripture and said, you need to see that this was a piece of God's heart. It's John 3.16. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What did God give us when he gave us Jesus? Well, the Bible says uh, 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 
In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then later on, it said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh. So God's heart became flesh in Jesus Christ. Are are y'all out there? So anytime God gives you a word, he's giving you his heart. Every time Jesus says something, he's giving you his heart. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. Don't say, oh, that's just the Bible. Just, you know, but I'm going to go on and do this my way and blah, blah. No, 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 no. You're getting a piece of God's heart because in his heart is his will. And in his will is how he's going to work it out. So you need his heart. How many of you know you need his heart? How many of you know you need his word? And how many of you know who his word is? It's Jesus. That's what he showed me. Isn't that a good old just quick piece of revelation? Just was wonderful. Remember this. And this is a prophetic promise to you today. And it's Luke 12, 32. It says, do not fear little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God delights in giving you the kingdom. What's in the kingdom? What you need? What do you have to have? Everything is in kingdom. But But you ought to know when it shows up, God is delighted that you got it. He's not like men that that hate you when you're successful. They can't stand it. They, they'll say, oh, that's, that's nice, but they're envious and jealous. But the Bible says that, that, that for it is your father's good pleasure, make no error, to give to you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure. He rejoices over you with singing. When you get blessed with whatever, When you get a breakthrough here, he's rejoicing. That's a healthy attitude about God. Other than that, he's waiting on me every time I sin to murder me. It's his good pleasure. Everybody say, it's his good pleasure. Now, let me go on to say, you've done the hard press. You've done it. The hard press. Now do the God press. Press into what he showed you out of his heart. This press is not without opposition. Remember I said that. The press is not without opposition. The fact that the word press there means you're coming up against something. Because God doesn't hide out. To make promises to you. He does it in the plain open sight. He does it in front of your enemies. So that's where the press comes from. It didn't come from the one that made the promise. It come from the one that heard the promise made to you. There's a press. It's like getting approved for your your, your, your loan for your home. And then here, here comes the press. Anybody ever gone through the process of a mortgage? Come on. Come on. And before you sign anything, I'll never forget the presses that we went through each time we got a mortgage. They had to check this. They had to check that. I had to bring a paste up. Then I see like I started all over again with everything all over again. Then they had to get this and they had to get that. And them rascals, while we were sitting at the table getting ready to sign the documents, they, the, the, my bank called and said, 
your mortgage company just checked your bank account to make sure that you're, you know, you're, Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. That's the press. The aggravation. And then they give you a stack of stuff to sign. That's a press. And you feel like, God, did I sign my whole being away? And my thing is, I always ask this one question. Do y'all do the crooks this way? <laughs> they get away with murder. They don't pay no taxes. They well. You've done the hard press, now do the God press. When I say do the God press, that means you're pressing, but you're not pressing by yourself. You are pressing with him. And let him help you through. Now, I have a, a, a story, and it's from the 39th chapter of the book of Genesis, and it's about Joseph. Joseph was given a prophetic promise. Joseph. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He was the favorite son of Jacob. And Joseph was a man who, 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 who wouldn't allow his prophetic dream to be stolen from him. His prophetic promise, however, was conditional. God showed him. This was the promise, the prophetic promise. That one day his whole family would bow before him in honor. Caution, 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 blink, blink, blink. Danger, danger, danger. Because immediately he's a goofy young boy. And he went and told his brothers what the Lord had showed him. As if they were going to receive him. Yeah, Joseph, we're ready to bow to you. And they plotted from then on in to get rid of him. Him and his dream and his new coat from their daddy. Do you hear me? But he had a prophetic promise and that was in him. God showed him they would bow down. And he showed it to him several times in several ways. They are going to bow down to But at that moment, opposition showed up. The press showed up. Because before the dream came to pass, my God. His whole family would bow before him in honor. We going to honor you? I don't think so. Anybody ever grew up in a nice sized ship ship? And it was always war all the time. Some of y'all were brutalized. Some of you were the brutalizers. Amen. So there's some things you couldn't say. Harvey was my, my, my younger brother, and, and I took advantage of it. Every day I'd run that rascal to the store to get me a pop. Go get me a pop. Okay. It was nice. And one day he got tired of me. And I said, go get me a pop. And I gave him the money. And one day he just came back. He had to pop, but it wasn't in the bottle. He drank it on the way. <laughs> Let me know. I'm tired of going to the store for you. That's what happened in sip ships. There's some stuff you can't, you, and you, certainly you can't tell them, you're going to bow down to me and honor me. Not only me, but daddy too. What? <laughs> we got a problem. Are y'all out there? At the time, this didn't seem like a far-fetched fantasy. Joseph was the favorite son of the father and had many honors heaped on him. But instead of moving in the direction of his prophecy, his life took a difficult and bleak turn. 
out of favor with his brothers, he was sold into slavery and then finally landed in, the, in Pharaoh's prison on false charges. His life had gone into a hopeless slump and Joseph could have easily descended into the slump, into, the, into doubt and despair, all of which lead to a helpless, hopeless, passive state. But Joseph persevered. How? Being faithful while being enslaved. Why? How did he persevere? Because inside of him was a prophetic promise. In prison, it was there. In chains, it was there. The word of God was there. When he was in disfavor, it was there. And then lo and behold, the promise kicks in. And somebody found out that he could interpret dreams. And he was the only one that could interpret Pharaoh's dream. But his dream was bigger than what he thought it was going to be. Because he was shown that his Family and father would bow down. He didn't know that the whole world was getting ready to bow down to him. Yeah. How? Because in his dream, seven years of famine and seven years of abundance. And so the first seven years of abundance, he had Israel as after he got appointed by, by the Pharaoh, he, 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 he was able to store up grain and uh, 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 enough to feed the nation, enough to feed many countries. People came to Egypt to eat. And guess who came? Guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> His family showed up. And when they got there, he didn't look like what had gone into the pit. See, when your promise kicks in, you won't look like what you used to look like because they didn't even recognize him. He had been given a different name. But he recognized them because they came to him to get grain to eat like everybody else. And so it kicked in. They had to bow down to their brother because the first sign of, 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 of honor and, and, and when you come in, into the, the place in front of royalty or, or people of high acclaim is that you bow down. And even though they were Jewish, they, they, Pharaoh, I, I need bread, so I'm, 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 I'm coming over. I'm, I'm bowing down. They didn't know it was their brother. Well, the Bible has an interesting word to say about that. In Psalm 105, 17 through 19, it said there, He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. This is the psalmist years later writing about this Joseph story. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in iron. He was laid in irons. Read the next word. Uh, uh, the next word. Until. The time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. That means he had to stay with the word of the Lord because that word tested him every day. I said they're going to bow down to you. They not bowing yet because you in the prison. They not over yet. You in the prison. That word tested him every day until it came to pass. Oh, you ain't ready for this. Some of you, your stuff going to test you. Until it comes to pass. In fetters tested. Chain rebuked. Denied. No. You can't have it. You won't ever have it. And then oop. There it is. It came to pass. So what you're going through. Might be the testing of the word in you. Check it. 
Oh, you want it to happen right now. You're wonderful. You're great. You're all of that. You're brilliant. You're, uh, it ain't going to happen. That word going to test until it comes to pass. And then it, when it comes to pass, you're going to say one thing and one thing only God did it. And you shall say that God did it. You want to take credit for your magna cum laude status or your honor status or your brilliance or your finesse or your strategy. At the end of it, you say, and God told me and he brought it to pass. And, but until it happened, this word was tested in me. Over and over again, you tested it. I'm in the middle of a test right now. I have a word, but it's still being tested. But I'm still hopeful because hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I'm not going to be sick. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him a praise. You're not going to be sick. Because you're going to persevere in the process. And you're going to stand against the press. And when it's all over the smoke clear, you ain't going to be goofy. And say, how did I make it? I made it somehow. You're going to know who it is. And you're going to give God all the glory. Whew. Whew. I think I preached myself happy. Just now. <laughs> your prophetic promise might have to come to save your son. Save your daughter. To save your family. To save a neighbor. It's bigger than you. Joseph family bowed, but the whole world was blessed and made it out of famine because that word tested him and he persevered. He did excellently in the test. He wasn't scandalous going through. Whew. I want to end this lesson today. Declaring some prophetic promises over you. I read them and God brought them back to me and said, you share some of them with them. These are some prophetic promises that your pastor wants you to have. They came to me first. But I want to give them to you. And I want you to war with them. And know they're going to come to pass. Number one, this is for somebody in this house. The battle is the Lord. Some of you are in some battle. But it's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. The future belongs to you. In these last days, you will rise and pursue your destiny with all diligence and perseverance. Some of you are going to have to get the tape to listen to this over and over again. You must become spiritually violent. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says this. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. It's spiritually, you got to get violent. I said spiritually. Before I go to the next one, I wanted to tell you and give deference to where I got this from. I was reading about prophetic promises that were left in the earth. More Cirillo is in the presence of the Lord now. But his wife, Teresa Cirillo, still runs a posting. And she posted 12 prophetic promises. And you can Google them and look them up. And when I read it, something jumped inside of me. When I read them. And so this is how you, you share them. And I want to make sure I gave deference to that. That great man of God who, 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 
who when I looked at his Facebook page, he had over a million two followers. People that believed the word that came out of him and believed the prophetic promises. Here is the second prophetic promise. Multiplication and increase. Hebrews 6, 13 through 15. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Whoa. Surely in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying I will multiply you. Whew. Catch it today. Catch it today. After he had patiently endured. He did it when, 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 when Abraham waited it out. Everybody say, he obtained the promise. It stops being prophetic when the promise shows up. Blessings to you today. <laughs> Come on, give him a better praise than that because he's worthy. <laughs> Lift up hands and continue worshiping him and worship. Come on, tell him something. Tell him thank you for what you heard. The battle is not yours. Hallelujah. And you shall multiply. Come on, all over the room, worship. Lord, I'm a man. We thank you for looking in. If you are unsaved today, give the Lord your life. Invite him in. You can repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I repent of sin. I believe that you were born of a virgin. One day you died on a cross and rose on that third day morning. And on that confession and belief, I am saved to the glory of God. Contact us. Call us. Dove Church. Phone number 313-361-3683. Look us up. We'll be glad to receive you. Thank God for you. And until we get a chance to minister to you again, blessings to you. You have great prophetic promises coming. Expect it. Because there is a word for you. Come on, worship saints. I'm amazed. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm amazed. How you love me. Praise the Lord again to all of our listeners. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.